Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're in the fish room again, as you can see. I've made a few small, subtle changes. There's no major overhauls going on, but I thought it's worth running through everything. And I've got a couple of jobs that I want to do today, uh, mainly involving these guys. These are the white cloud mountain minnows, golden white cloud mountain minnows. Um, and the other thing you might notice is that all the saltwater fish have gone. So I passed them on to somebody who came and collected them a few days ago, well, more than that. So I've given this a good scrub out and filled it up and done some things. Not entirely convinced, but we'll have a look at it anyway. And while we're here, I thought I'd just run through the rest of the stuff that we've got going on in the fish room. So where should we start, where should we start? Why don't we start with these guys? So this is the both the Pleco, the Pleco, um, the bristle nose Pleco or the Ancestress breeding tank and here we've got some um, albinos, lemons, plain old browns, super reds, reds and we've also, you might notice these Danios that I rehomed um, from one of my neighbours, they now live in here so they've got lots of swimming space to keep them happy and we've got the orange flash um, epistogrammas who have sort of moved into this big cave um, they seem to be having a bit of a fight with one of the smaller ancestors that keeps trying to get in there. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Everyone's fairly happy. In fact, we can probably do with feeding these guys because they have finished off the half a courgette that I left in here yesterday. So we'll put in a little bit more. Um, I think, or I thought we had one of the guys sitting on eggs, but he's actually moved over there. So I'm not so sure that that is actually the case anymore. Um, but this it is quickly turning into one of my favourite tanks. I know I've said that a few times already. But this is an awesome tank to just sit and watch, especially when the lights go out, because that's when everything they start to get a little more active and come out and you see a little more interaction with each other. Um, there's two massive males in here, one of the lemons and the one next to them. They're pretty big beefy fish with good old bristles. Uh, and they're quite a sight to behold. So hopefully I'll get some a little bit of footage of them. But yeah, I'm kind of happy-ish with this tank. We've got a lot of planting over on this side. Um, I wanted to get as much of this in as possible because this stuff goes really fast. This is the, um, I won't butcher the name, I'll just write it down here somewhere. Um, you can buy it on my website, check out aquariumadventures.co.uk. Um, but it grows like a weed, provides loads of cover. So if I thought one of these was pregnant and somebody had mentioned in one of the videos that they thought that one of these was about to drop, I um, haven't noticed anything, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened, but that gives them plenty of cover in there. They can get out of the way, they can hide away. You can see one of the ancestress, uh, not the ancestress, the epistogrammas is hiding in there at the moment, just underneath that little canopy. But yeah, I'm really happy with this tank. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. There's plenty of room in there. We might change things up a little bit if they start breeding, but that's where we've got some of these other tanks are going to be used for that. So let's spin around on this top row up here. Um, these are the existing tanks that you'll have seen before. I've just added this one on at the end. It needs a bit of a clean up. Um, I've just siliconed the pump return element there because that broke slightly when I was taking it apart. So I'm just waiting for that silicon to cure um, and then I can get that cleaned up and filled up. And that's the one that's got a, like an internal sump behind it, so I don't need to worry about filtration for that one. These three, um, they were various other things, but what I've started doing is moving all my shrimp. So this is going to be my shrimps. Shrimp rack. No, shrimp. Shrimp shelf. That's not easy to say. So I've started moving all the cherry shrimp, which were in this tank previously. And I've split them across these two. There's also still loads down there, and there's still loads in this tank as well. Um, but I'm going to have these as the majority of them, possibly even all three, so I can split up the group a little bit more and then if I have one of the tank crashes hopefully they won't all go and then possibly move the red crystal shrimp into this tank once it gets going. So we're going to have shrimp on this level, snails on this level, um, but what I might actually do is start getting back into bettas again and get some, I saw some nice bettas I went to one of my local uh, shops the other day they had one that was nice, um, but I didn't buy it. Um, 
I think I might just save up or bide my time until I can get a few quality ones, maybe at a show or at a, an auction or something along those lines. Because yeah, these are kind of ideal size for bettas, I think. And we might have a go at breeding some bettas as well. Um, but if I could get, let's say, five or six males, one, two, three, four, five, well, we could use that tank as well, so there's six. We could get six males, some nice varieties, maybe some. I really like the crown tail bettas, they're the ones with the kind of splayed out fins. Um, so we'll see, that, that might be a future thing. But for now, this is just going to be a shrimp breeding shelf, so no, shrimp, snail breeding shelf. And then down below this we've got the uh, rainbow fish tank. So at the moment, these are my, um, we've got the dwarf neon uh, blue rainbow fish here. And there's a couple of threadfin rainbows you can see at the back. I actually added a couple of these. So these smaller ones you can see, they're fairly recent. I bought them the other day. I was sure that two of them were female, but now they look male. And the difference you can see is the red fins on these guys. Um, that's the males. And then you'll see one of them has more yellowish fins. That one there, I think it is. Is it that one? Yes. Um, and that's the females. But these smaller ones all looked like they had... At least two of them looked like they had yellow fins in the shop. But now that I look at them, they look a bit more red. But anyway, I really like these fish. Um, you can see the size difference from like these guys, for instance, to the, the larger ones there. So, although they're called dwarf rainbow fish, they're not tiny fish. Smaller than normal or other varieties of rainbow fish get, obviously, but they're not any, not nano fish. And as you can see, there's also a lot of shrimp in here as well, all over the place. Um, just letting these plants grow out. I sold a load of plants recently. So letting everything catch up again. So that's this rack done. And then we move on to this rack. In here, nothing really, uh, just snails. This was hosting, um, what was in here? I forget now. Oh, the Danios and one of these guys was in here. Um, but I've moved them on since. This tank, these are the new guys. So these are the white cloud mountain minnows, the golden white cloud mountain minnows. Um, one was a rescue from a neighbour, the rest I went out and got, so as I had, so as I had a nice little group. So we should have seven now. I think we've got two females. Uh, the females tend to be a little more bulbous, but they're quite young, so... Um, I'm not expecting any breeding behaviour, but I've always liked these fish. I've kept the normal ones before, um, never the goldens, but these are... Everyone keeps telling me, everyone I've spoken to that's kept these before is, keeps going on about how easy they are to breed. Um, I kept the normal ones for, must have been two and a half, three years. I never saw any breeding action. So that's the plan with these guys, but they're not going to live in here. They're going to move on to this tank, which was the old saltwater tank. And this is the one that's got me a little bit conflicted at the moment. So there is a heater in there. We don't need that. It's just in there because the plug's hard to get out. It's switched. Well, it's switched as low as it'll go rather than off. I've got this filter in here, which has just been helping me clear out the water a little bit. Um, so this was previously salt water. So it took a lot of elbow grease to scrub this thing clean. Rinse it out a good few times. And then I wanted to have a bit of a, a kind of river scape. So I had a few of these rocks and I bought these rocks from my local fish store and this lovely bit of wood, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but the wood, it's a floater, so it wouldn't sink. So at the moment, it's just got the rocks sitting on it to help it stay down for a, a number of weeks, no doubt. Um, and then I can worry about scaping it. But I've got this, these rocks and this gravel. This gravel was, it was called natural gravel. It doesn't look entirely natural to me. I was hoping it was going to be more of a sandy colour. But I've went with it and I've mixed in some other gravel that I had around. Uh, so I'm not sure I was. My, my plan was just to have this more of a hardscape with maybe one big ball of java moss or something to let these little guys spawn in. Um, rather than planting it out fully. But I'm not sure now. But I'm going to add these guys over tonight, so that's the job for now. You'll also notice, this is something I get asked about a lot. You see that fuzzy stuff on the wood? 
It's often something that happens when you put new wood into a tank. Um, it's a biofilm, it's essentially a fungus. It's not harmful. Um, normally, when I stick wood like this in a tank when it's new and this happens, the fish absolutely love it and they go wild for it. Uh, but it seems counterintuitive to say, oh yeah, the fish love it, it's a nice fungus, but fungus is a mushroom, it's a fungus, so it's not necessarily going to be inedible or dangerous. Um, so yeah, this sort of biofilm, it's good for the fish. If I had shrimp in here, they'd be going crazy for that stuff. I'm sure these fish will polish that off in a few days as well. So my plan is just get these fish in here, get them acclimatised. Uh, this tank is also going to be the overwintering tank for the goldfish that's out in the pond at the moment. Because um, the temperatures are starting to drop a little bit, so he has to come in soon. And that's probably where he'll live over the winter, which will hamper the breeding project. No doubt he'll eat any fry that do appear. But that'll give me next year to go on. And then that leaves these two tanks. So this one at the moment is guppies and cherry shrimp. This one is just cherry shrimp and there are a couple of guppies in there. They've jumped in from the other tank because I've had the, the lids off for a while. So these are the ones that I'm not entirely sure what to do with. Um, but I reckon I'll clean out this one at least. And then if we do get some action uh, from the bristlenose plecos and get some babies in there, that can be a grow out for them. And then that leaves me this tank to do Hmm, who knows what with. So I've got two or three tanks at the moment. I've got nothing in them. I just need to decide what I want to do with them. So as always, oh for God's sake dogs. So I've got two or three tanks at the moment that I don't really know what to do with or have any current plans, but there is another option at my local club at the end of the month. I'll no doubt pop along to that and see what I can find. Um, but let's get these guys moved over. The rest of the fish room, I'm sure you've all seen it before, but we'll run through it. We've got my HMA filter over there. That's what gives me the nice fresh clean water for the, the fish room. That has drips into every single tank, which all the main tanks, there and there, they all overflow. And um, so they are on a constant water change, uh, as well as this one's on a constant water change. And it's just these ones that I have to do manually. I may well get around to it, but it's not really worth it with these little tanks. It only takes 10 minutes to do the, all of them. Um, but if I had big tanks on here, I'd drill them and do them in the auto water change as well. So I've got the HMA there. That's coming in through the thermal valve, so it all drips in at the right temperature and just makes life so much easier. We've got my dehumidifier up there. Um, that runs, provides heat to the room as well because it gets quite hot, but also stops it rotting away any wood and the walls and all that kind of stuff. And then down here, this is the bit that I try not to show anyone because it's just the junkyard. So I have got, there's a Fluval FX5 filter under there which is running this tank. Uh, that's all the old rock from the saltwater tank. I've got all loads of old media and filters and bits and bobs and parts and all that kind of stuff. I've got my biohome media again available on the website. I'll probably be selling some of that at the uh, auction as well. And then I've got my fish boxes, so there's a box inside the box for transporting fish. And then the same going up there, all my polyfill and more filter stuff. And then just general garage stuff. So that is my fish room. Let's get these fish moved. So these guys originated in China. Um, they come from the Bayun Mountain or the White Cloud Mountain but I believe that they're either practically extinct or actually extinct and the only wild uh, remnants are in places like Taiwan, Vietnam, other places in China where the captive bred species have been released back into the wild and I think that's a testament to how well these guys breed in captivity even though I've not managed to do it myself uh, lots of people have managed to do that and uh, I mean that this is one of the good things about the hobby where things that are extinct in the wild can be kept going by conservation if you like when in the hobby it, it may well be that these things are extinct in the wild because of uh, over collection but at least we have a chance now to to keep these going um, so they're a really hardy fish 
don't require a heater um, quite often people will get them as their first fish because they they can withstand the <laughs> the beginner's attempts to keep them without a proper filtration and doing the fishless cycle and all that good stuff so the area that they came from originally was lots of uh, smaller fast flowing streams and um, so i think they'll do well in this tank with this little filter putting out a bit of a a current for them so hopefully that will keep them going um, um, but I've heard them called things like the poor man's tetra but if you, you see them they're, they really are quite quite beautiful fish and uh, they're a joy to keep so I'm glad that I've got a, a bunch of them again and found that excuse to keep them so hopefully I can get my own little breeding project going and over time um, we can build up a wee community of them well, there you go, just a wee update for you. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, click that subscribe button, share the video everywhere, give me some likes, give me some comments, give me some dislikes if you don't, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!